You're listening to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hi, welcome to Dear Alice. We have a really great question today. Yes, we do. I think this is awesome on so many levels. Yeah, and I'm glad that people are asking this. So yes. let's, hit, let's hit it. Yes. Okay. So the question comes from um, at Jeb 2006. We are building a new home with a production builder. What are some upgrades we can add after closing to give our home a more custom upscale look? And I think whether you're building right now or you're in a home that is a little bit lackluster and maybe the builder made decisions for you or a previous homeowner, these, these things also apply to you of how to make your, your um, more average home feel more custom, more high end. Yeah. Yeah. So let's launch in. Hey. Yeah. A few things that you can do, even while, if you are working with a production builder currently, and obviously Jeb 2006 asked if you can do something after the fact and aftermarket change, make smart decisions with your builder mm -hmm. too. Even if it's a production builder, you're likely going to a design center or picking out from a limited, you know, array, what tile you're using, what paint you're using. They're already doing that work. So I would find out first what their upgrades are for a three-tone paint, you know, for your ceiling, your casing and your wall paint. That's what three-tone is. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be changing different colors on those three surfaces, I would find out what their upgrade charge, because it's still, even though it's an upgrade charge to that mortgage, it's still going to be less probably than having somebody come in after the fact to repaint everything. Mm -hmm. So I would find out that some of those upgrade options first. Yeah. And just kind of educate yourself on what's worth it for you before or during the construction and what's obviously you're going to do after the fact anyway. Mm -hmm. So would you say paint is going to be like a higher priority on the list or can you think of anything else that might hold priority over that? They always say that paint is the least expensive thing you can do for the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So in my mind, um, depending if you're like, do you know what? We're already at the top of our price range with this new build. We can't afford three tone paint. My advice would be, then spray everything white and then you come in after the fact and you can paint the walls, mm -hmm. but at least your base case ceiling will be white. Otherwise you've set, you've been in those homes where the whole house is like a version of taupe, the, the baseboards, the casings, oh. the ceiling is taupe. And I just think the ceiling is a hard thing to paint on your own. It's really hard. And yeah. all of the base and case is a hard thing. You kind of want a sprayed finish for that, not a brushed finish. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I don't know. So your husband does painting yeah. as well. Do you feel like, would you say if you can only afford one tone paint? I would do something that you're not going to have to do your base in case. And your ceiling, yeah. right? It is, yeah, it and is And then hard. you can always come back. Um, you can always And you the can walls. roll the walls yourself or totally. wallpaper them or whatever. Yeah. So that's at a really base level. A big impact is going to be your paint. Mm -hmm. If you're already living in a home, um, or let's say that you did get the three tone paint. The next really, um, I think thing that's going to make a big impact in making your house feel upscale is getting the right lighting Amen. in yeah. there. Yeah. Because there's nothing that screams, um, builder grade home or inexpensive home, like a boob light in every room. They really just ruin it Including for everybody. your entry. <laughs> no, <laughs> on I'm, a vaulted ceiling. They Not probably that. don't have a boob light in your entry, but I think if you can. They might. <laughs> they might, yeah, it's true. Or they might just put cans everywhere. Yeah. I don't know. So adding the right lighting mm -hmm. in the right scale would be amazing. And um, that's one of the one of the biggest compliments that I get a lot in my house when people come through is they're like the lighting in here is incredible. It's like going into a beautiful jewelry shop and these lights all have personalities and the room all of a sudden has this identity mm -hmm. and it really feels grown up. So do your best to get the very best lighting that you can afford, whether that be through, um, you know, using a designer to help you get those pieces. If you're, um, if you're pulling concept photos from Pinterest of things that you love, so you can get looks that you're loving mm -hmm. kitchen pendants over the Island are yeah. usually one that really makes a kitchen feel average because you see a lot of the same stuff over and over and over again. They're spindly and small. Yeah. 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 Not it's usually impressive. not extraordinary. So, and they're never the right scale. Mm -mm. Yeah. So yeah. getting the larger pendant and getting, um, and maybe you get two big ones instead of three small ones, mm -hmm. but I think that will also really feel very custom. Yeah. yeah. I also think sconces are like a, a, yes. a dead giveaway on a custom home 
because builder grade homes are always only going to give you a light overhead, but they're not going to give you a sconce on the wall. And that's a lot for your bathroom. Yes. Yeah. You're talking about bathrooms. No, I'm talking about like your entry hall oh, or your stairwell, yeah. right? Yeah. Going up the stairs, having two sconces on the wall or um, on an entry wall when you come in two sconces, so you can hang a mirror or a piece of art in between mm-hmm. the sconces. People just don't give you a sconce in an open area. They will, they will give you a light in the bathroom, usually overhead the mirror because you'll have to buy one fixture instead of two. But to what Suze is saying, putting a sconce on each side of the mirror, more at eye level is going to be more of the luxury thing to do. Mm -hmm. So do that. I mean, that's something you can talk to your electrician. If you are in this production building phase, just saying, I want two sconces. Will you at least wire for it? Mm-hmm. I'll buy those in my own due time when I have the budget to do so. Yeah. And so, yeah, keep that in mind while you are building. Cause that's one of those things that they're already going to have an electrician inside those undrywalled walls. Yes. Right. Pulling those wires. So anytime you were like, I want to have sconces on the stairwell, have them wire for those. And then you can always add those little things afterward, but at least you don't have to have all your walls ripped apart yeah. if they're already in there doing the work. Great point. So, that is a great point. And even if you have like, you want a entry chandelier, but again, it's not in your budget now, have them at least wire it, mm-hmm. cap it, use your cans, but don't just put a boob light there for the meanwhile, because it'll stay there way longer than it should. Yeah. yeah having that cap there will at least be a reminder. Okay. I'm going to save for that one that I really, really love mm-hmm. and then get that when you're ready. Yes, totally. And you can, um, you can comb estate sales. You can, you can look at vintage shops, uh, to be able to get that fixture maybe sooner than later if Mm -hmm. you want, but that is definitely going to be like the appetizer to the meal coming in, seeing a beautiful entryway and having that fixture is going to make you feel really successful. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when we're choosing lighting, we're going to look at lighting pretty holistically because we want to make sure that each light isn't pulling its own stunt and they don't flow together and look pretty Mm -hmm. together. So if you do have like a vintage light that you're using for the entry, when you choose those sconces, take a picture of that entry light with you everywhere you go when you're looking for sconces, just to make sure that they coordinate and um, they look really great together. Amen. Yeah, Yeah. that's a great way to improve that whole look Mm -hmm. to make you start to look like a more expensive home, more custom home. Yeah, Getting the lighting right. Yep. I think finish work. Yes. I think that's a huge one. Um, we talk about that. I mean, the finish work when we're talking about like your baseboards, your casing, um, a lot of builder grade homes are just going to use your average, your little four inch, mm-hmm. just a plain flat stock baseboard. And if you can bump that up, whether you're in the building phase or afterward, mm-hmm. if you can bump that up to be a more sizable, interesting base mold, it'll look more expensive. Yeah. They're going to probably give you a three or four inch tall base mold. We're saying go with a seven inch, you know, base mold. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the height of your ceilings, like you really might need something that's more like Susanna saying eight, nine, Mm -hmm. something tall, Uh, big casings are really, really, I was going to say in trend right now, but it's always a sign of a great home. If you walk even in an old home, um, you're going to see some really beautiful finish work, um, great crown moldings, great base molds. The door casings are going to be thicker and deeper. And so some of those things um, just give the house some integrity and some depth Mm -hmm. and a real quality to it. Yeah. I know in a lot of starter homes, they'll have actually no casing on the windows. They'll actually curve those. And I think, again, that's a dead giveaway that this was, you know, kind of done on a budget. And so if you can even just get a four inch casing around your windows and an actual window sill, I think that uh, that also adds a lot of value because um, it's something that on your next house, you're always going to be looking for. And even so, even when you turn your house around, it's something that that buyer is going to, you know, they'll see value in. Yeah. So totally. and finish work again, you mentioned paint is an inexpensive way to make the biggest impact. Finish work, I think is along that same line mm-hmm. where finish work, like actual stock moldings, those aren't that expensive. So finish work, I think is the second thing that you can do to add value to your home that's not going to break your bank, Mm -hmm. especially in those public facing areas, if that's where you need to start. And then you can go up into your bedrooms and start to add those, those little value points. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Finished work is a huge, is a huge impact. Um, we're, uh, we often get phone calls from people that say, can you draw up paneling for my Mm -hmm. entryway? 
um, some sort of rhythm for that. Or in my dining room, they want a wainscot or they want the walls paneled. Mm -hmm. That's something that um, is traditional. It gives you that well-built home. So if you do have more budget than just great base and case, then maybe in your entry, you want to try something like that or in the bedroom, uh, living room, dining room, some of those elevated spaces just to sort of um, get the icing on the cake in there is really, really fun to see that coming to life. I even think it's just pretty when it's when it's just the raw wood and it's starting to happen. You're just clapping your hands and you're just so excited. You can't wait to see it painted. But finish work is probably one of my favorite parts of the whole build process. Um, even before the house is painted, you can start to see the house really take shape. Yep. You will feel like a grown up when you, you have paneling on your walls. You'll be like, yes. I have made it people. Ah, oh, success. <laughs> yeah. The sweet yeah. smell of success. <laughs> yeah. Finished work will definitely do that for you. Uh, little things that you can do, um, that don't necessarily take, um, hiring a contractor or something like finished work might is just, um, upgrading your knobs, your kitchen knobs. Mm -hmm. And um, just hardware. You might not have great doorknobs. You can get great doorknobs, um, cabinet knobs, all those little details that you come in contact with every day when you go to open and close a drawer or a door. Uh, it just like the way it turns the weight of the doorknob, you can tell it's not as hollow feeling, it's heavier. And it just feels more substantial. It's the jewelry of the home. Just yeah, to add to that, I can't remember who said it. It might have been one of you guys, but like, when talking to your builder, maybe have them like not put any hardware on it so you can go find the hardware you want. So you don't have to like yes. you know, match the right like pull um, width or whatever. And you can drill your own holes in. Yeah, that's a great that. point. You know, like on your kitchen, when you have a drawer, sometimes you won't use a knob, you'll use a pull. And if they drill on like that really affordable cabinet hardware that's not that special, what Corey's saying is it, then you're going to drill in at like a three inch width. And maybe you're like, oh no, my dream hardware doesn't come in three inches. It's four inches or it's five inches and you've got holes in your cabinet doors now. So if you know that you're not satisfied with any of the cabinet makers hardware that's in your budget, just say, you know what, leave the hardware off for now. I can use my fingertips to open the doors because you know, there's enough of a lip there and I'm going to wait two months to get the stuff that I really want. And then we'll get it drilled on ourselves. Totally. Yeah. That's great. Um, so yeah, hardware makes a huge difference. I think even like when I look at like your front door, Jess, like the yeah. things that make your door so beautiful and feel custom is the hardware. You not only have like a really great pole that feels substantial, is fun to interact with, but you also have like a door knocker. You can add like beautiful kick plates and things like that, mm -hmm. that just like, go and look at some of your Pinterest photos of stuff that you love, like a, yeah. an entrance that really makes a bang. And see, even on like that one door, it's worth the investment because that's the first thing people come into contact with your house. Yeah. And so and it's, again, it's that whole curb appeal idea. And so they, I don't know, where did you get your cute door knocker? I was just going to say, you guys go on anti, um, house of antique hardware. It's mm -hmm. a website mm -hmm. and they have um, production stuff that's made today, but it looks really antique. And so I have one that's a big Fox head and it's, um, it's got, Oh, I can't remember. Does he have like a re he has like a knocker in his mouth mm -hmm. and then you knock the door that way. I also have a postal slot in my door that um, takes letters. So I often have birthday party invitations or whatever on the ground in my entry. And I'm like, oh, somebody used my mail slot. That's so charming. <laughs> and so, and then like a big brass kick plate on the inside. There's all sorts of goods and jewels on House of Antique Hardware. If you like that old, that sort of old money established, well-built home look, if you're more modern, they there are places that you can just get like a big, um, just a big ring that would act as a door knocker on your more modern door. And it's still going to look um, more successful than not having anything yeah. on it. I you paid attention. Yeah. To those details. I actually don't even know if you have a doorbell because I always use your door knocker because it's so fun. Yeah. Well, a fun fact about me is for whatever reason, I've never had a doorbell on any of the homes. Um, in my last home on Alice Lane, the contractor accidentally nailed the wire that would make the doorbell work. And so I was like, I think it's a sign of the universe. I'm not supposed to have a doorbell. And I, in this house, intentionally didn't do one because it's just kind of a funny in-joke of our life. So I said, I'm going to do a big door knocker and then people will just knock because we're not a doorbell family. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We had one client in Seattle who did the most charming. It was like one of those like old school like bells 
too, where you like pull the little lever and it made her so happy Yeah, so she's since sold that home. And uh, again, this was a home that like was kind of run of the mill, but we did a lot of really amazing upgrades to it to yeah. make it feel more valuable. And she called me and she's just like, you would not believe what the realtors are saying about this house that we already have five offers. Amazing. So again, those little things that you're investing into this home will pay pay for themselves in the long run. It's they the really thing will. that the people talk about when they come to see your home, if it's listed, they're like, oh, did you see the doorbell? It's just those little things that mm-hmm. tug at their heartstrings that make it feel so custom. Yeah, and they'll pay a lot more for it because they're yeah. like, I don't have to find it. They found it for me. Totally, <laughs> and, and they put the detail into every little thing. Exactly. That's worth it. Or it just enhances the way that you live mm-hmm. that's so custom to your life. And it's not run of the mill like like all the other homes on the street have. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. I think another thing that, always makes a room feel finished to me. Um, you're going to get into your new home and no matter what, you're going to need to get some privacy in your windows. You're going to need to get window coverings, especially in the summer. It's so blazing hot. Your air conditioning bill is going to be through the roof. Um, you need privacy. So you have to get window coverings. Um, window coverings are always going to make the room feel finished, especially, uh, draperies, I think make the room feel just lovely. Adds a sort of a softness to it. I am personally one that loves a sheer. Me too. So I'm not adding a lot of visual weight to a room. It's just sort of that wispy sort of sheer fabric. Maybe it's an open weave sort of linen-like fabric, or maybe it's more of a silky, um, like a polyester sheer type fabric that just sort of puts um, a soft, almost film on things. Mm -hmm. Draperies live on the wall. They don't necessarily live over the top of the window. You can pull them shut. We love to do either um, a roller shade. We love a lot of Hunter Douglas's ones that are going to cover the windows. Um, Much like we often reference the holiday. We love that movie where she pushes a button and those shades come down. So it's just a really simple treatment that will help filter light or block out light. But then the draperies are going to add sort of the softness. They're going to add a lot of height to a room because they're higher usually than the windows. But it makes your windows feel you know, at least a half, like 50% taller than they really are. So once you get your win- your window treatments in, it's also going to make your home feel really custom and well-dressed. And finished. Yeah. Yeah, it finishes. Yeah. Another thing that I was thinking about, I was kind of going through that Washington residence in my head and she, yeah. we had added the doorbell. We, added, we did a lot of things. But one thing I think that was so impressive was the stair runner. Oh, On yes. her stairs. Her stairs you, you saw from the, that was in the entry hall. Mm-hmm. And so you saw that and it was everything. And she has lots of little kids. So functionally, it makes a lot of sense to have like a carpet runner right there to absorb all those little feet going up and down and up and down those stairs. It'll save your sanity as a mother Mm -hmm. or father. Um, It's more comfortable. It's more comfortable. It adds a fashionable element. Totally. Or it can. And the stair runner does not have to match the carpet everywhere in the house. Please don't. This is your, (laughs) this is your pocket square moment or like, or like your scarf moment in your outfit to add a little bit of pattern. And the stairs are usually in a visible place because architecturally they're beautiful so adding a little scarf or adorning those in some sort of way will add big, big fashion points to your home. Yeah. And if you like you if you like all those little details and you're like, I'm gonna get a really cool look by doing these few things in my home to make it look expensive, there's even like darling stair runner rods that you can get. Those are those little yeah. brass rods that go just like on the crease of where the tread meets the little riser on each of those steps and you can get them on signature hardware. Like there's Mm -hmm. spots that you can find them for not that expensive, but it adds that jewelry that makes your home look expensive. Yes. So get those little things. They're really, really fun. If you're liking some of that detail. Mm -hmm. Um, Any advice for them on where to look for um, stair runners? Are they going to go into the world and just buy a runner and put it on? Or do they get broadloom carpet and have it cut down? And bound, um, what advice do you have for people just barely foraying into the world of how do I get a stair runner? Okay. If you're, I mean, if you're a collector, I've seen ones where they actually take actual old school antique runners and they, they get really creative with it. You can do that if you're filling up to the challenge. Most people, and even for a lot of ours, we'll, we will find a broadloom carpet, but we'll be finding it in a pattern. Yes. So you're going to be going to go to your carpet store and say, I want to look at all your special ones. I want to look at anything that you'd put on a stair runner that's going to make me happy to look at. 
I'm going to, I want a stripe. A lot of people love stripes and it feels really classic. Some people, a lot of times, like for Rachel's, we did the antelope. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that a lot and that's from Stark. And so Stark you can is spelled S T A R K. And if you're not already following them on Instagram, that's a lot of fun too, but they yeah. make exceptional carpets and mm -hmm. they have a lot of incredible patterns. Those are like top shelf, the Mercedes Benz of carpet yeah. lines. And, um, because you're only buying as much to make a runner, I would say splurge on, on the runner. Anyway, keep going Sue. Yeah, and Stark. I think I've mentioned this on here before on the flooring episode, they have a lower end line called prestige. And they have a lot of the same ones. So if you're wanting an animal or a structured little check or something, just do something that's fun that you'd wear, mm -hmm. that you'd want people to walk through your door and say, oh my gosh, that looks like you. And you're like, I know I found it. it was, I rescued it. And yeah. anyway, and they'll be so stoked to see something different. I get so excited when I go into a home and it might not look that interesting from the outside, but when I go in, I, I see them on their walls. I see them on all these details and people will feel that when they come into your home that you cared enough to like learn about yourself to make this space feel a little bit more like you. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah. If you look on our portfolio at Tiger Oak, um, that's one of the homes that we did there. Carpet Runner is a flame stitch and it's really, really great and kind of an organic movement because stairs are already so straight. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, you know, the rhythm of stairs there, there are a lot of like straight squares, rectangles. So getting something more organic, a movement on stairs is great. I once had a friend ask, which carpet do you like for my runner? And she had one with large, a large diamond graphic pattern on it. And I was like, do not use that on your stairs. <laughs> you do not want to see diamonds crawling up rectangles. It's no. too much structure. Good you call. want that to be a little bit more organic. I think that's why Rachel Parcells works so well is because it is an antelope. Um, and especially on hers because she has a curve. If you have any curves or anything happening on your yes. stairs, definitely try to stay, stay away, from, away from a grid yeah. or a stripe. Uh -huh. um, your carpet layer will kill you yeah. <laughs> before he's done because it will be a nightmare. Yeah. And you're not going to love the end look yes. of it. And then there's another one. Um, if you look on... Um, the Coastal Contemporary, mm -hmm. they have a stair runner called Cumulus Cloud. And I actually have Cumulus Cloud on my stairs as well. And it's an organic um, movement that is a little bit more cloudy in shape. It's, mm -hmm. it's all wool. It's gray and white, easy to get along with. I've had it on my stairs for five years now. I, it looks brand new. It shows absolutely no wear on it. The so the power of wool, the power of wool. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And if you can go ahead and splurge on wool for the stair runner, because again, you don't need very much of it. Mm -hmm. So get that, get that Mercedes Benz carpet on the stairs. And then you can have like more of the Honda Accord carpet in the rest of your house. Mm -hmm. It's a workhorse. It your is a workhorse. Are a workhorse. Yeah. So yeah, do yourself yeah. a favor. So you don't have to replace it in five years. Totally. It's such a bummer. Yeah. Unless you're like, I want to do something wild and crazy in five years, then yeah, yeah. It's just a carpet about runner. Yourself, yeah, right? so. totally. Um, another really important thing to do as you bring new things or bring things into your new home to make it look upscale and custom is pay attention to the scale of everything. Yep. Everything that's affordable is going to be small yeah. and that's going to make you play small and it's going to make your house look really, really cheap. Yep. So you're going to want to pay attention, bring in big art, yep. big art makes your room feel big. We've talked about this with rugs too. Big rugs make your rugs feel big. So you might have a big wall in your home and you think you're buying a big piece of art and you bring it in and it looks really small because your wall is so big. So getting really, really large scale stuff is going to make you feel like a grown up in a big way. Yes. And I have kind of a fun tip because I just experienced this and we're getting it for my husband and I are getting it for each other for Christmas is we were at a restaurant and they have these like art exhibits in the back. And so go, if you're like, I don't know where to find art, go to student exhibits, mm. go to student art exhibits and you can find really incredible big scale things usually for a lot less. If you're just dipping your toes, you can obviously find really great prints online and you can kind of customize the size, go as big as you can. We found this one artist that she, all of her stuff was painted on vintage wallpaper. Mm -hmm. So it didn't even have a frame and it didn't even like want to have a frame because it just is installed like on your wall and you feel the texture of that weighted paper mm -hmm. hanging on the wall. And anyway, and it's huge. And I just let, we let, fell in love with this one piece and we saw the price on it. And because it's not framed, it's going to be such a fun piece in our home. 
someday just because it's so opinionated and kind of fun that it doesn't have a frame and doesn't have to have a frame. Mm-hmm. So again, kind of go outside what you'd normally think to find art and find some of these big pieces. Like Jess said, go vintage shopping here in Salt Lake. We have a lot of really cool shops that sell a lot of interesting, older, like iconic looking frames. Go to those spaces, find things that are interesting, find things that are large scale. And I think that'll make your home feel custom and feel one of a kind. Yes, that's awesome. Um, what else What else is going to make a big difference? We have um, fireplace updates. I feel like oh, yeah. usually the builder um, isn't going to do anything extraordinary for a mantle. Sometimes he'll just run tile up the wall and slap a piece of wood on top and call it a mantle. Mm-hmm. So even just updating that tile or whatever he's used to maybe being a marble. And the marble... Marble comes as tiles sold as 12 by 12s or 18 by 18s. The only thing you have to do is use, I believe it's 10 inches of non-combustible material around the face of that fireplace um, up up against the wall. So if you do just get 12 by 12 tiles on in my home, in my living room, um, you'll, if you go look at our portfolio, I think it's under Jessica Bennett's house. Um, I used a zebra stone around my fireplace and it's zebra stone tile. It's not even slabs, but because the pattern and the the veining is so wild. You don't really see where one stops and one begins. It was a really affordable trick to do. And then you can get a full mantle surround. Um, you can have a finished worker come in and, and build you a three-sided mantle um, rather than just having a ledge across the top of tile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. In my, my sister had kind of a builder grade. She did have a builder grade home uh-huh. when we started and we just finished a remodel trying to give her a lot of updates uh-huh. and she did have the corner fireplace. Yeah. Damn those corner fireplaces. <laughs> they keep showing up. <laughs> anyway, we actually did. We replaced it when they were ready and we never even paid attention to the corner fireplace. It was behind our furniture grouping. I actually never even wanted to highlight it or face her furniture towards that f- fireplace because it looked so dumb and puny mm-hmm. and the, fi- the finished work was really scrawny and like there was zero mantle and it just kind of made you sad to look at and we ended up replacing it with a cast so Mm -hmm. again if you are now living in a house that someone else built that you don't love your corner fireplace or something consider doing a cast yeah because that cast fireplace is all non-combustible the whole thing is a stone and so you'll get a really grand look Mm. um and so again, great. okay, kind of remedies that corner fireplace a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Then well, and a cast mantle is going to yeah. look incredible anywhere. Totally. Um, in Rachel Parcell's home, on you'll see that on our um, portfolio in her family room. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually just got published by Traditional Home Magazine. Yes. That whole thing is cast. There's a hearth and there's a mantle up above. Um, probably on something in the average home for a cast mantle would be around what? Around two. Two thousand yeah, dollars. And that's for just like a really simple simple squared up, uh-huh. not a complicated profile or anything, mm-hmm. but about 2000. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not as crazy as you think it might be to replace that um, scrawny builder grade mantle. But for $2,000, your room is going to look like a really expensive house when you get mm-hmm. that big, beautiful precast mantle in there. It's just going to be stunning. It looks like carved limestone. Mm-hmm. That's what precast is um, looking like, even though it's more of like a concrete material. Yep. If you guys have the, if so, if someone only has the budget to do like attack one room at a time, yeah. what room do you think holds the priority to that? Probably the, the room that you're going to live in the most, um, which would be family room kitchen. Okay. And today they're kind of one room. Mm-hmm. So um, whatever you can do to make that great, you could start in the kitchen with the kitchen pendants and your hardware on your knobs. That's going to give you a really great um, elevated look right away. And those things are um, kind of... Uh, at um, eye level, those pendants, and I think all the hardware, you're coming in contact with it every single day, Mm -hmm. especially if you're a woman, which I imagine a lot of the listeners on here that love design um, are probably women listening. So I think that's going to really thank them back in a big way. And while you're hitting up hardware for your kitchen, you might as well just grab a few extra knobs for your master bath because you'll also Mm -hmm. come in contact with those every day. I'd probably hit that first. And then across the room from that is probably going to be your great room. If you have a fireplace, making sure that that mantle is something that's great. Cause that's the other focal point, you know, in the sort of the opposite. And that would be really, really great. Getting the large scale art, the drapes in there. Um, those are things that are all attached to the home that are going to really elevate it. 
Yeah. We talked about built-ins in a previous episode, but I think adding built-ins too in my sister's library, we just did, you know, two simple bookshelves with closed storage on each side on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then we wrapped it around her door casing. Yeah. And that again, room has never been something to boast about, but they love taking people in there because it's just, again, it feels a lot more expensive. You have homes for everything for your book collection. So you don't have things like hanging out on the floor, you know, or in boxes and storage. So anyway, I think built-ins is also something if you can, it goes along with the finish work to add, to make your house look more expensive. Mm, That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope this is helpful for everybody um, as they look around at their home and they are thinking in this new year about what improvements they want to make and what would make a difference. And um, yeah, it's been really fun thinking about it. And we take a lot of people on this journey with us every single day. So take a hard look at it and hopefully this has been helpful. See you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 